Okay. In this video, we'll be talking about emergency treatment of status epilepticus. We'll talk about what is status epilepticus and how do you manage status epilepticus in emergency department. First of all, what is status epilepticus? Any seizure that lasts more than five minutes is called as status epilepticus. Or the patient is having cluster of seizures, one seizure after another, another seizure after another, with patient not recovering a normal mental status in between that the patient is having so many seizures one after another and the patient is not developing a normal mental status in between those seizures that is called as status epilepticus it occurs in 30 percent of the patients who are non-compliant with the medication the non-compliance with the medication like these patients are already diagnosed with epilepsy and they are non-compliant with the medication Therefore, they develop status epilepticus. And status epilepticus is, increases the risk of permanent brain damage since there is abnormal electrical activity that abnormal electrical activity can damage brain cells. Patient can develop hyperpyrexia since increased muscle contraction can generate heat with it. That heat can result in hyperpyrexia. Increased ATP breakdown will cause hyperpyrexia. Patient will develop acidosis. And uh, since that uh, more energy is being consumed, more carbon dioxide is being generated and that carbon dioxide will result in acidosis. Patient can develop hypoxia since that increased metabolic demand due to increased muscular contraction, the oxygen supply will be unable to meet the demands. And patient can also develop respiratory compromise when these muscle con abnormal muscle contractions of start affecting the respiratory muscles. Management of status epilepticus involves ABC approach. You first check the airways, you secure the airway and you give the oxygen to patient. And tongue is secured by placing any soft object between the teeth. Remember, never put your hands in anyone who is seizing at the moment because they can chop your fingers off. So never put your hand into a person's mouth who is seizing at that moment. And to protect their tongue, you should put anything soft object between the teeth so that they do not chew away their tongue. You pass two IV lines and while you are passing those two IV lines, you obtain blood and you run a certain investigation. You do blood glucose, you do calcium electrolytes and creatinine. Since you are looking for the cause of this patient developing a prolonged seizure, you may look for glucose levels because hypoglycemia can result in a can precipitate into a seizure. Abnormal electrolytes can precipitate a seizure. So two IV lines are placed and blood is obtained for investigations. IV dextrose is given even if you are not suspecting hypoglycemia. Even if you are not suspecting that that patient is having low glucose, you still give IV dextrose because this increased muscular activity, it can result in hypoglycemia and also hypoglycemia is a precipitating factor for status epilepticus. So that IV dextrose is not going to do any harm. It's going to give advantage to the patient. Diazepam, 5 to 10 mg. IV directly into the vein is given at the rate of 1 to 2 milligram per minute. It will control the fit rapidly most of the time. Benzodiazepine will shut the brain down, shut that abnormal activity and will result in cessation of the seizure. It can be diluted in 10 to 20 ml of normal saline as well. I can also give it directly into the vein. And remember, when you are giving these, uh, this benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine can also cause respiratory depression. So you must have facilities of intubation also available with you in the facility when you are giving any benzodiazepine IV. If still the seizure is not controlled after giving benzodiazepines, then what you need to do is that you have to give Phenytoin, you add phenytoin and remember you should not give uh, phenytoin into that dextrose IV line that you have started because phenytoin precipitates into the glucose solution. So it should be given through glucose free IV line and loading dose of phenytoin is 20 mg per kg. Infusion rate should not exceed 50 milligram per minute. Effects of phenytoin will be visible within 20 minutes after administering it. And side effects of phenytoin include hypotension and arrhythmia. Even after giving phenytoin, if the patient is still seizing and the seizures are not controlled, then what you need to do is that you have to consider phenobarbitone. 
phenobarbitone can be used with a loading dose of 20 mg per kg and it is usually sufficient to stop the fits in the worst case scenario if the seizures are still not controlled even after giving phenytoin what you can do is that you can increment phenobarbitone with further dosage of phenytoin dose of phenytoin should be increased by 5 to 10 mg per kg increment so this is an increment that you are adding this is additional phenytoin that you are giving over the phenytoin that you gave before to to bring to suppress this abnormal electrical activity in the brain it can be increased by 5 to 10 mg per kg till the seizures are controlled and infusion rate should not exceed 50 mg per minute even if the seizures are still not under control and 30 to 60 minutes have passed you have done everything and see the patient is still seizing in that situation it is called as refractory status epilepticus if what happens in refractory status epilepticus that the patient is resistant to all your treatment what you need to do now is you have to put that patient down into general anesthesia and if you have decided to put that patient into general anesthesia you have you are giving midazolam or propofol to induce general anesthesia you have to shift that patient to icu in icu when you are giving general anesthesia you have to give the patient artificial ventilation you will need to consider intubation with it so refractory status epilepticus that patient will straight away should be shifted to an icu facility so in summary we started our treatment with an abc approach and then we gave diazepam to control the seizure if the seizure is not controlled we gave phenytoin and if the seizure is not controlled with phenytoin we added phenobarbital to treatment regimen even if the seizures are not controlled we increment the phenytoin dose further till the seizures are controlled and the maximum limit should not exceed 50 mg per minute and even if the seizures are still not controlled you shift the patient to icu and you put the patient into general anesthesia most common cause of this these epileptic patients developing status epilepticus is either discontinuation of anti convulsant drugs like these patients were were started on certain treatment regimen and now they are non compliant with the medication and they develop such resistant seizures developing status epilepticus or any acute febrile illness any active infection can even precipitate an epileptic seizure resulting in status epilepticus so you need to consider these factors and if there is any precipitating factor treat that and if the patient is non compliant with the medication you should make sure that that while patient sending that patient back to home you make sure that the patient is now compliant with the medication complications of status epilepticus include aspiration since that patient is having abnormal muscle muscular contractions abnormal reflexes those that patient can develop aspiration and increased muscle contraction can result in rhabdomyolysis resulting in increased cpk and hyperthermia and damage to the body due to hyperthermia in summary we talked about status epilepticus any seizure lasting greater than 5 minutes abc approach iv lines iv dextrose diazepam phenytoin should be given in glucose free iv line phenobarbitone and then increment of phenytoin and then refractory status epilepticus needs to be treated with general anesthesia in icu if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other video on epilepsy the link of the video is given in the description below thank you very much